friends, and welcome to The World Transformed. All this week we've been talking about artificial intelligence, and tonight we're going to conclude our discussion by addressing the question, is AI the biggest thing ever? My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Phil. How are you? Well, I am super fantastic. Happy Friday. How are you, my friend? Man, I'm great. So, is AI the biggest thing ever, Phil? That's what we're talking about. Well, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, said the following, AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. Anytime you work with technology, you need to learn to harness the benefits while minimizing the downsides. And of course, electricity and fire are great examples of technologies that had profound impacts on humanity and have a lot of risks and downsides associated with them. On Tuesday's show, you were starting to make some comparisons that I think are right up there with fire and electricity. When it comes to AI, you know, something that's an enabling technology like that, right? I mean, AI is the Pandora's box that enables everything. And the only thing I can think of that would compare would be the various communicating technologies going all the way back to the development of language in prehistory. At some point, we went from animals that were not able to communicate very well at all, to being able to communicate with one another with, with proto-language and then with language. And then, you know, ultimately at some point we started uh, uh, scratching in, in clay, right, and preserving it. And so we had, the written language was born that way. Papyrus eventually, that was a huge deal. And ultimately, uh, you know, we get a printing press in the Middle Ages, right, and that, that was huge. I guess the next huge step after that would probably, after the printing press, is probably the development of the Internet. And now what could possibly be more profound than the Internet? AI. I'm right with the Google CEO on this. Uh, it's, it's a big, big deal. You drew, you drew the line all the way, but let's go back because I think that's really interesting. Let's go back to language because if you look at just, if you look just at language as its own thing, first spoken and then written, if we, if we could treat those as kind of part one and part two, of an overall development in the course of human history. It definitely changed us as a species. It enabled civilization. It enabled right. everything that came afterwards. It fundamentally changed the planet and ultimately maybe the destiny of the whole universe. I mean, th that sounds over the top, but really it isn't. When you consider where humanity may go and what role we may end up playing in the cosmic scheme of things. None of that would have happened but for the fact that we started talking and then writing. Everything follows that. Nothing happens without that. And it's possible that artificial intelligence, just skipping all those intermediate steps for a moment, is that level of change, right? Something that right. changes us as a species, changes the history of the whole planet, changes the history potentially of the whole universe. It's right in line with that. It's that transformational. It's as big as coming down from the trees. Well, let's just take that analogy a little further. I mean, at the time that language was developed, uh, there was more than one species of human. Now there's just mm. one. There's just one. So this thing called language, you know, it enabled a lot of things, but was it necessarily the best thing that ever happened to some of our cousin species? Maybe not. They're unavailable for comment. We tried to uh, find the caveman lawyer, and uh, he was not available for comment. So, He's um, still frozen. <laughs> yeah, at, <laughs> right. at time of airing, he was, he was, at time of recording the show, he's still frozen. But, yeah, that's right. you know, the, the thing is, they might have had language, too. Some of them. Neanderthals probably yeah. did. So Homo erectus maybe even had language. I, I don't know about written language. They never got that far. So that may or may not have been the thing that made the difference. I always like to go with the, we were the less nice ones, right? That's why we're here. We're... <laughs> They're, they're able and we're Cain, basically, is, is how we ended up uh, coming after them. But when you, when you keep going with that idea, one of the things that's kind of interesting about that is artificial intelligence ultimately may enable the reintroduction of multiple human species. We converged into a single species. And now we're reaching this point where technology may allow us to fork again, to branch back out. So for all those future human species who will enjoy existing, maybe they would look at it and say, well, it's just as well that the homo sapiens won out because that enabled all of us to exist. I don't know. Those are tough philosophical questions. So you're, you're taking the case then it's bigger than fire, bigger than electricity even, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm there. I think so too. If you look at fire, it's huge. And again, that's one of the things that maybe set us apart from our coexisting 
fellow humans at the time, right? The other human species that also existed. But with fire, we were able to cook, we're able to forge metal, we're able to bake clay. So it's kind of a foundational technology. Helped us through the last ice age. Uh, it was light. It was it was yeah. it was everything. I mean, it, it helped us hunt. We would we'd burn whole forests down to get the mammoths to stampede. It was a huge thing. I would say the only thing that compared, perhaps, in those days, technologically speaking, was uh, maybe the atlatl, which was a spear-throwing device that allowed us to throw spears harder and faster than, than with just your arm. And also, uh, the use of dogs was a big technology to hunt game with. So those things took us from basically being animals to pulling ourselves uh, uh, out of that in, into civilization. But I think fire takes us farther. Because yeah. we could have had those other two things and gone on as hunter-gatherers forever. But yeah. fire enabled civilization. It's foundational to all this, like, making pottery. and Yeah, you definitely don't get metals without fire, right? So you have, you have to have fire to refine the metal. Yeah, I don't think we ever become civilized the way we think of civilized without fire. It, it just it couldn't happen. We could have done some pretty cool stuff, but I don't think we would have been civilized the way we think of civilized without it. Not no. to say that it makes you civilized, because there definitely there have been hunter-gatherer societies that never developed full-on city-states and all that kind of stuff that used fire, right? Uh, right? And what's interesting is, taking it back to the other example, language probably helps spread fire, remembering how to do it, right, and being able to show each other how to make the fire go. So fire, I think, is, is, is up there with language, almost as big, definitely an enabling technology for civilization. Electricity is kind of your big accelerator for industrialization. We were full blown into the Industrial Revolution when electricity came along, but it's hard to imagine we would ever have gotten as far without it, particularly without information technologies, which wouldn't exist. So in a real way, electricity is kind of the next fire. It's kind of fire 2.0, you know, it accelerates us towards a new kind of civilization, this data-driven information kind of civilization that we live in now. So I think that you can combine those two ideas. If you can get your head around something that is a combination of fire and language, that's how big AI is. I actually think it might be bigger than anything that's come before, that in right. some ways AI will be viewed as really the true beginning of history that everything that came up to this point is kind of prehistoric, and we're sort of the cavemen, right, from the standpoint of the post-singularity folks, which kind of hurts my feelings, but I guess, you know, <laughs> assuming, <laughs> assuming we live to see it, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay with it eventually, right? You know, it would be like in the Geico commercials, we'd be upset that uh, <laughs> we're, we're talked down to. It, when you become a caveman, you end up being the thin-skinned like those like those guys that were constantly being offended. Very sophisticated, very well-spoken individuals. Yes, they were kind of passive-aggressive, but they were pretty classy dudes. I miss those commercials. I wish they'd bring those back. So then, if AI is going to be the biggest thing ever, why? What's going to make it so big? It is the thing that allows us to do everything else, everything that we're trying to do right now. And, and we, yep. we mentioned some different, different races, uh, including the space race and the race to conquer aging, the race to conquer obesity, cancer, heart disease, lots of non-medical things like transportation, you name it. All these things that we want to do, we'll, we'll be able to do better. And then there's things that we haven't even thought about doing because it's so far out of our reach at the present time it doesn't even cross our minds, that we'll have a real shot of doing with AI. I say we, maybe it's just the AIs that are doing it at that point. Hopefully we're along for the ride. But we don't know that we will be. But I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like, well, what will AI do for us? It will allow us to do everything we've ever wanted to do, plus everything we never knew we always wanted to do, which is a much bigger right. list. You think about the show we did last week, What Can We Not Rule Out?, what are the possibilities for our species if we're not destroyed by AI, if we make good use of it? The possibilities are truly unbounded. Oh, I won't say infinite, but they're unlimited in any significant way. We're on a ship with warp drive to Alpha Centauri. To the extent that something is at all possible, you're able to do it. Because one of the first things that these AIs will do is work on AI. The first AIs are going to be relatively primitive because they're the result of relative primitives. 
us, right, that they created them. But if they're able to work on themselves and make themselves better and then being smarter again, uh, work on it some more, you have a never-ending cycle of uh, an intelligence explosion at that point. So then you're just basically limited by the laws of the universe. And probably not nearly as constrained by those as we are now. Things that we think are absolutes, uh, maybe they're not quite as absolute as we thought. I think the biggest thing AI will do is give us a bigger view of what's possible, that the possible will open up for us in a way that it never had. We've talked about the deep possible and the hidden possible. So many hidden possibilities will become revealed, and so much that's deep will be brought within reach. It's really almost impossible to describe because we don't know what these possibilities are. And that, in the end, is why this phenomenon is described as a singularity, because it is beyond what we can describe or project from where we are now. Something we always mention is how smart these AIs will be and, and how there will be an intelligence explosion. You could also look at it this way, how, how fast they can, they'll be able to do things. They'll live right. at a different pace from us. Uh, you know, five seconds may be an eternity to somebody like this. And, uh, they, you know, and they're, and they're able to accomplish things in a blink of an eye that we can't even keep up with. So we're talking about a very different world. And I'm going to leave it with one thought. This is the one you can, folks, have a great week and try to wrap your head around this. It could be that the biggest thing AI will bring along is that next big thing, which will be the really big one. What's that one? No idea, right? But bigger than fire, <laughs> bigger so. than language, bigger than AI. So we'll come back and we'll, we'll try to explore what that is. I don't know, Stephen, somewhere down the road. Well, anyway, it's been great fun talking about artificial intelligence. Glad we ended on a cosmic note. It's been great having you all with us. We will be back next week with three brand new shows, possibly with a geek out in there. And until next time, live to see it. Mm-hmm.